Shabbat Shalom to every one of you and Bruchim Habayim. Welcome to this uh, week's Torah portion that uh, Hashem has been continually been uh, blessing us for the proper nourishment of our neshamot, our souls, from where the nutrients only come from one source, and that is from the Torah, HaKedusha. As we very well know by this time, I suppose that the Torah HaKedusha is not just the law, but it is very messianic. It is the instructions for our daily lives. It is a prophetic, manifold truth that speaks of the Akhrit Hayamim. The end times, which speaks of the, the glorious uh, final redemption of the house of Israel in, inside Messiah, Yeshua our Lord. It speaks also of the, the redemptive work or the participation of the the grafted in believers in the house of Israel, and it speaks of her maturity in the faith that will surely strengthen the, the house of Israel in general, that we will follow the basic fundamental truth and principle of God's holy Torah, which is based from the beauty of Judaism. We are in the Messianic Judaism. It speaks of our Messianic walk uh, coming from the very teachings of Messiah who was ever present there during the time of antiquity or during the olden times as Western Gentile theologians say. During the time of the Tanakh, the Torah, and then the Nevi'im and the Ketuvim. It is very, very important for each and every one of us to understand the, the journey that God has placed upon us in order to be stronger and to be more knowledgeable and to apply this, this, this uh, deep knowledge from his infallible word, combined with a with a chachma, the wisdom that that he is giving to us in order to apply that infallible word from the holy Torah and from the words of the prophets and from the writings and all the way to the besora, the good news or the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the very life of our chief shepherd, the great master Rebbe, that is Yeshua, the Messiah, our Lord. And also the reiteration of the Torah Chedusha, which is the blueprint and the bedrock of the whole Jewish unified word of God, being reiterated from the Egeret or the letters of the Shiliachim or the apostles, namely, look, the letters of Yochanan John, the letters, the letter of Yaakov, which unfortunately turned out to be James when translated by the Western Gentile translators of the Bible, and also the, the writings of Shimon Kepha, a.k.a. Apostle Peter, uh, also the writing of Yehuda or Apostle Jude. This unified Jewish word of God is such of great magnitude of importance if we fully understand the depth, the height, the width of the Torah. Having said that, 
It is the bedrock. It is the very blueprint of the whole Jewish unified word of God. It was beautifully spoken by Yeshayahu Hanavi, the prophet Isaiah. It is spoken that I am the Lord, there is no one. I am God, there is no one besides me, declaring the end from the beginning, announcing the things to come from the very beginning. God revealed everything that is going to happen in the last days, speaking of the Akhrit Hayamim, the end times. He revealed it from the start. He, he revealed it from the first five books of Moshe Rabbeinu, which is the book of Breshit, Genesis, the book of Shemot, that is Exodus, the book of Vayikra or Leviticus, the book of Amidbar or Numbers, and the book of Devarim or Deuteronomy. All this Sephiroth, the books of Torah, speaks of our Lord and our Savior, who is Yeshua, the Messiah, our Lord. It speaks of the instructions for our life. It speaks of the direction where we ought to walk. It speaks of the spirit of Hashem that gives us that inspiration and that knowledge wherein we are to we are to follow and walk through, through that divine inspiration that is the Ruach HaKodesh residing and living inside of us. He beautifully and clearly and explicitly mentioned in, Rome, in uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and in the book of Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah chapter 31, starting from verse 30 up to 32. Hebrews chapter 10, it says, And I will put my Torah in their hearts and in their minds. I will give them a new heart, a heart of flesh. It's something that you and I need to understand the simplicity of the Word of God. Why? Because the Ruach Chodesh is helping us and guiding us into all the truth. Yeshua said that when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth. Depending upon the measure of our emunah, depending upon the measure of our faith and our trust in Hashem, he will be synchronized in guiding us in the way of all truth. Things that we cannot yet comprehend, he will not yet reveal it to us. But the moment that we are receiving little by little the nuggets of his treasures, the riches, the revelations, the inspirations that all come from the Torah and the words of the prophets and the, in the writings and the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the very words of Yeshua the Messiah, all have been reiterated from the Torah Kedusha, and some had been fulfilled, and some are still in the process of being fulfilled up to the glorious return of Melech HaMashiach, Yeshua our Lord. The purpose of which we are receiving these treasures and riches, the unveiling, the revelation of Yeshua the Messiah is for us to be very effective light and salt of our surrounding. We are not going to follow the blind because both will fall into the ditch, the scripture says. We are supposedly witnesses and testimonies of the living, walking, talking Torah is in this day and age where it seems more difficult to comprehend the word of God because of the strong force and power of materialism and physicalities 
the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, the pleasures that enter in, kind of bring the world, the people and the nations of the world down in that lower level of spirituality. Hopefully, because of what's promised, had been promised to us by Hakadosh Baruch Hu, through the mouth of his son, who is our Lord and Savior, Yeshua the Messiah. This world that we are in has a better hope. And there will be a restoration. And the salvation that God has promised to his servant Abraham Avinu, Itzkak Avinu, and Yaakov Avinu, who turned Israel, will all be coming to pass to the nations of the world. The house of Israel is the very, very group of selected, covenanted, partnered by God, his precious, treasured people, Israel, to be the, the or Lagoyim, the light to the nations of the world. In this Torah parashat Vaishlach, we read from Genesis Breshit chapter 32 verses, or verse 4, I would say. It says, Yaakov sent messengers ahead of him to Esau, his brother, towards the land of Seir, the country of Edom. At this point, Yaakov Avinu had already achieved that high level of Kedushah that high level of holiness on his own life, a life of a tzaddik, a life of a righteous man, that high madrega or that high level of maturity of his spirituality because of the numerous revelations of God the Father, Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, from the start of that revelation that God has given him a dream that he had seen a sulam, that path that was settled on the earth. Speaking of the earth, the hamakom, the place where God will dwell his name forever and ever, referring to Mount Moriah, the place where our father Abraham offered his son its cock in the Akedat its cock, the binding of its cock. And that place became the place where the first temple was was built. And there the presence of the Shekinah dwelt among the house of Israel, the Jewish people. And then after the first temple there is also that exact place at Hamakom, Mount Moriah, Jerusalem, was also the place, the exact place where the second temple had been constructed, it had been made. And there, the presence of God dwelt amongst his people. That same place also will be the exact place where the third temple will soon be given to us during the time of Yeshua the Messiah, after his glorious return, and when HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem, God the Father, will come down and dwell among his people, the whole house of Israel, comprising the restored 12 tribes of Israel. Yaakov Avinu saw that in his dream, in his vision, was a sulam, a ladder, a pathway, settled, fixed there in that land, Yerushalayim, and going up to Hashemayim, to the heavens. And there he saw the angels of God ascending and descending. It is a picture that the Malachim, the angels of God, had already been stationed, ordered 
to guard that place, Jerusalem, Mount Moriah, where because the name of the Holy One of Israel will forever place his name. And the people of God will go there. And that place will be a place where all the sins of the people, both the Jewish people and the nations of the world will be purified. Hearts will be purified because that place will be a place of forgiveness, a place of worship, a place where, where there will be the full redemption, the final redemption of the house of Israel will take place only because of the presence of the sulam, the ladder. And that ladder, as we have already studied during the last parsha, last Shabbat, that's a picture, a representation of the one and only Mashiach of Israel, who is Yeshua, the Messiah, our Lord. Beautifully said it in John 14, verse 6, Yeshua the Messiah says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. There is only one Savior, only one Lord, wherein God has given his redemption and salvation through one man, and that is in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah of Nazareth, that had been inscribed in the book of Acts. So having said that, because of Yeshua, the Messiah, who is the mediator, the one and only mediator between HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem, our Father God, and the people of Israel, first to the Jewish people, and second to the grafted in the nations of the world that had been grafted in into the house of Israel inside Melech HaMashiach, Yeshua, our Lord. We do our korbanot sacrifices. We do our services, our own bodies first and foremost as korban chai, a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service of worship. It plays the first role in order to be well-pleasing and acceptable and, and approved in the sight of God. That is our lives as korban chai, a living sacrifice. It means we are to offer ourselves, our, our whole bodies as living sacrifice. It means we are willing and ready to present ourselves as that korban, that, that animal sacrifice. We offer all of our soulish animalistic life, all those that have that I, that me, that mine, that myself, that monumental, graphited, selfish attitude. It has to go. It has to die. It has to be burned. Those lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the, the pleasures of this and that. I want to buy this. I want to grab this. I want to have this. It has to go. It has to be burned. It has to be offered everything unto Hashem, our Father. And then comes our services will be secondary. The callings and the giftings of God upon each and every one of our lives will come into the service only through the sulam, only through the ladder. And that is only through Yeshua the Messiah, our Lord and Savior. Because without that ladder, without that sulam, without Yeshua the Messiah, all of our works are merely in vain. Isaiah Yeshayahu said it, that all of the good works without, without the center, 
that is well pleasing before God, and that is Yeshua, the ladder, the sulam, all of those service will be filthy rags. All will be counted as self-righteousness and will be in vain before God. So having said all of this, our father Yaakov Avinu has attained all his kedusha, the high level of maturity and righteousness that God has expected of him. It all only became possible because of the sulam, all the presence and the presence of Mashiach in the spirit, not in bodily form, because it wasn't yet the time when he was when he was born of a virgin and came down from heaven to earth. But all the while, during the time of Avraham Avinu, Itzkar Avinu, Yaakov Avinu, the presence of the Sulam, the ladder, the Messiah of Israel was ever there, ever there with the Father in heaven, working side by side in order to help us do the genuine teshuva, the genuine tikkunim, the rectification of all the wrong things that we have done and to make it right through the power of Mashiach and the divine inspiration that is from the Ruach HaKodesh. So let us continue. There is something that our father Yaakov, who later turned to Israel. If you will notice that Yaakov Avinu became Israel after a while, but his names, Yaakov, sometimes he is still called Yaakov, even though his name had already been turned into Israel, Sometimes the Torah calls him still Yaakov, and sometimes Israel, and then sometimes Israel, and then sometimes reverting to Yaakov. Why is that, my dear friend? Because Yaakov is a picture of a physical man. Israel is a picture of the heavenly man, man who is a prince of God a man that has already crossed over from the two worlds, that is Olam Haba and Olam Hazeh. That Israel is the man who has already joined together Olam Hazeh and Olam Haba in order for the role of the Messiah to be alive and well for the work of redemption, for the work of salvation, for the work of making genuine repentance and rectification for each and every one of us. Having said all of this, the maturity of Yaakov Avinu, the, the, the holiness of the holy Yaakov, as I have said, but still there is an unresolved problem residing deep in the heart and soul of the holy Yaakov. And what is that? The enormous guilt and condemnation that resides deep within Yaakov's soul that haunted him for, the, for those 20 long years, starting from that hour inside its cock, his father's tent, when he pretended to be Esau, deceived his father, and his twin brother, Esau. He snatched that blessing, which was intended by its cock, Avinu, for his brother, Esau. Although it was advised by her, by his mother, Rivka, Imeno, he couldn't live with what he did to Esau. Yaakov couldn't accept or deceive himself to accept that he got the blessing from his father 
out of deceit, out of falsehood, out of a big lie, and not out of a right intention. In Hebrew, it says kavana and truth. That guilt and condemnation hounded the holy Yaakov for 20 long years. So now we are going to see the wonderful revelation of what God has reserved for his son Yaakov and to his son's son who will be the descendants of Yaakov, who will turn Israel after few moments of this trash. That is why that load of guilt and condemnation he was carrying, and that was hounding him day and night for 20 years, is something that God was so mindful of. God is a restorer. He is a deliverer. He unites. He doesn't divide. He's the God of love. He's the God of so many chances. Before and now and the days ahead. In Brashi chapter 32, verses 11 and 12. Here we see Yaakov Avinu cried out to Hashem in prayer. The famous prayer that I love so much. In Genesis, Rishi chapter 32, verses 11 and 12, I will read from the mother tongue Hebrew. It says, Katonti mechol hakasdin umechol haemet. Asher asita et avdekha, ki vemakli avarti et hayardem, haze veata hayiti lishne machanon. Verse 12, chapter 32 of Breshit, he followed it up by saying, Hatsilenina, deliver me, rescue me, Hatsilenina, miyad achi to my brother. Miad from the hand of Esav. Miad Esav ki hare anuchi oto ben yavi ve hikane em al banim. He says in English, I am unworthy. Katonti, Sabina. It's he said, I am not worthy of all the proof of mercy and all the dependability that you have shown to your servant. For, for with only one staff, I crossed over this yard, the Jordan, and now I became two camps. These two camps, Yaakov Avinu was referring to, is his camp, the camp of the righteous, his family members, together with all the belongings and the riches that God has blessed him with. And the second camp, which is the camp of the angels, the spiritual heavenly beings joined together with Yaakov Avinu. It wasn't that great, unforeseeable and unconceivable spiritual reality, but it is already a reality that came to life over the life of Yaakov Avinu because he saw the spiritual realm joining with the physical realm. The angels joined and accompanied Yaakov Avinu and his family. That is why he said in verse 12, Please, Hatsilenina, Hatsilenina, please rescue me, I pray, from my brother, Yak Esav. I am afraid of him, afraid that he'll come and attack me without regard for mothers and children. This is 
the very climax of that guilt and shame and condemnation that haunted the Holy Yaakov for 20 long years. And this is the time that God will show Yaakov his grace, his mercy, his restoration, the reconciliation that he longed so much between himself and his twin brother, Asaph. There in Breshi chapter 32, verse 25, the Torah says, crossing the brook or the ford of Yabok or Jabok in other translation, he, Yaakov, was left alone. He was left alone by himself because he ordered his family to stay behind while he was left alone. The Torah says there was an ish, a man, wrestled with him from that night time until daybreak. That angel, that malach, that ish, who wrestled with Yaakov Avinu, stayed wrestling with him starting from night time up to the break of the dawn. And that malach, that angel, as Chasal said, as the sages say, may all their memories be for a blessing. That angel is the very angel of Asaph. That angel of Asaph, the heavenly representation of Asaph came forth in the physical, in the person of an ish, but he is still the angel of Asa. He has a role in the life of Asa in order to finish this guilt and condemnation once and for all, because it was all along the merit, the zechut, of Yaakov Avinu, that this thing happened. The angel of Esau wrestled with him, and this wrestling match took place because that angel wanted him to be in the ground, to be on the ground, in order to put him into submission. The wrestling match is made for the person with his opponent each one of them will try to put the other into submission. The purpose of the wrestling match. But the scripture says, although the angel of Asaph tried to overcome the holy Yaakov, he just couldn't. The strength of Yaakov Avinu, because of the accumulation of the holiness, the accumulation of the Sulam, the ladder, the Mashiach of Israel was all along with him, who promised him all the blessings and the strength that he will go, he will be with him and will never forsake him. And thus, Yaakov Avinu promised to be faithful to Hakadosh Baruch Hu and also to that Sulam, that spiritual ladder who is the spirit of Mashiach, the spirit of Mashiach, who is Yeshua the Messiah, in the spirit before them, because of the strength of Yaakov Avinu. The scripture says, it was Yaakov who triumphed. He prevailed over the angel. He didn't realize that the blessing is all along meant for him through a divine revelation from the Holy One of Israel. That is why before the breaking of the dawn, he wouldn't let go of that angel, but he demand for the blessing, the blessing of Yaakov. And the angel asked him, what is your name? Of course, the angel knew very well 
who he was wrestling with. It was Yaakov, but he need to ask what is your name? Because what is the meaning under that name Yaakov? What is that meaning? The carnal Yaakov, the physical Yaakov, the man who will who will protect his own interest, the man who will be afraid of letting go of all the things that must let go, the man who have deceived his twin brother, Esau, but he was already fully surrendered during that time. He was all ready and prepared to receive the divine calling of God, the ultimate and final calling of God upon his life. And that is exactly what was given to him by God through the angel of Asaph. And it says, from now on, your name will be no longer Yaakov, but will be Israel, the prince of Akadosh Baruch Hu. But one thing that happened, that angel twisted and dislocated the hip of our father Yaakov Avinu in order to place him in that weak point so that he will no longer trust in his own strength, in his own power, neither in his own ability, but this time with his name changed from Yaakov to Israel, he will now live according to that name, a prince of God who only put his whole trust and faith in the Holy One of Israel, in the Holy One of Yaakov, and the house of Yaakov will follow the same. For it is not by might, nor by power, not of human strength, but it's by the Ruach of Hashem, says Adonai Elohei Savaot. And one that take that that revelation happened. The beauty of what God has shown will now come to pass. Israel has been born, declared by God himself that he will be the prince of God, not only to Yaakov Avinu, but also to his sons and his sons' sons and to his generation and descendants after him from generation to generation. And up to now, we are the beneficiary of this blessing that comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The supposed lifetime stripes, the supposed lifetime animosity, the supposed anger that resided in the heart of Asa, but because of God's plan, it all was changed. In scripture, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 16 and 17, and I quote, also see to it that there is no immoral or godless person like Asaph, who sold his birthright for one meal and that one mill is that one red stew mill. For you know that later, when he wanted to receive the blessing, he was rejected. He was rejected by Iskak of Vino, his father. No more blessing intended for him because his younger twin brother deceived him and got the blessing instead of him. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 17, he found no chance of repentance, though he begged for it with tears. This, this heart of bitterness, though Asaph sought it carefully with tears, though he cried out before his father, Father, Bless me. He cried out. He shouted from the 
from the depth of his soul to the top of his lungs. Father, give me your blessing. He couldn't find any sure and genuine repentance, but pure bitterness and anger and hatred against his brother, Yaakov, who deceived him. But because of what Yaakov Avinu did, the time that he wrestled with that angel, the angel of Esau, that changed the very scenario of the spiritual realm into the physical realm. Esau, who was then with the company of 400 soldiers in order to strike vengeance, exact vengeance to do war against his twin brother Yaakov was instantaneously changed because the heart of Yaakov Avinu had been surrendered before Hakadosh Baruch Hu. The moment that he, he cried out in that prayer, he said beautifully that that, that prayer that he he said, Katonti mechol chasadim umechol haemet asher asita et avdecha kive makliya varti et hayarden hase veata haiti lishne machanot hatsilenina hatsilenina namiyad achi esav ki yare anukhi oto pen yavi ve Hikani em albanim. Father, rescue me. Father, I call unto thee. Deliver me from the hand of my brother Yaakov, who will attack me and destroy not only me, but the mothers and children. Because that was intention. That was the intention of his brother Yaakov or his brother Asaph. But it was all changed. It was all changed from hatred into forgiveness, from bitterness into love and humility. That thing beautified the beauty of the reality of Asaph. Asaph is a symbol and a representation of Edom. Seir. Edom, which is now a representation of the Western world, Christianity. Because of that, the animosity, the hatred, the bitterness of Edom, represented by Asaph, the Western world, majority plays the role in Gentile Christianity is now changed by Hakatosh Baruch Hu, who did the act of humility, who did the act of change. It was Yaakov Avinu because of humility. When he saw his brother from afar, the Torah said, what Yaakov Avinu did, he bowed to the earth seven times. He did not bow before Asaph being a murderer, an idolater, a wicked brother. No, Torah said, Yaakov Avinu, all the while filled with the presence of God, now changed from the heart, now healed and restored from that guilt and condemnation which haunted him for 20 long years. We're all healed. We're all gone. We're all destroyed. And his name is Israel. That's the reason why he bowed seven times before God. is the number of completion. He bowed before the presence of God. That this time around, I will never focus my eyes, my attention on physical things, neither on material things, neither on 
earthly creatures like my brother Asaph, I will focus my eyes unto Hakadosh Baruch, Hu, my Creator, my God, Hashem, who is the Maker of the heavens and the earth, and who started a good work over my life, is able to complete it. Now, my dear friends, we are now entering. And we are now in this time of, of midnight hour. We are now in this, in, this, in this days of ambiguity. We are now in these days of inexactness and uncertainty. This is a picture of the nighttime. But Yaakov Avinu wrestled with an angel all nighttime up until before of daybreak. Imagine that long hours of wrestling much. It is a picture of these precarious times, as the Torah Hedusha calls it, the Chavlei Mashiach. What is a Chavlei Mashiach? It is the birth pains of Mashiach, my friend. As the days and weeks and months and the final years pass by, as we are now in this end time, right at this very hour, 5784 from the Jewish calendar, 2023 from the Gorian Gentile calendar, we are now passing through this Chavlei Mashiach. This is the birth pains of Mashiach. It is speaking of the greater degree of labor pains and being intensified and intensified and intensified until the final moment of that travailing where comes that unbearable pain will happen. And that will be soon to happen in the years ahead, in the soonest years ahead. I hope you get these words in the spirit. So I, I ask you that you open your heart in the deepest and widest way possible, my friend. This is now the, the Chavlei Mashiach. We are now going to enter into that higher dimension and level and degree of labor pains and that hardships, the trouble, around this world will be intensified until the very hour of the birth of Mashiach, referring to the coming, the glorious return of Melech HaMashiach, Yeshua, our Lord. And as the Torah says it, even the Hasatan, the dark side, the Sitra Akhra, the evil one is intended for evil. God will turn it around for good, that his name will be glorified. Yaakov who turned Israel now reconciles with his twin brother Esau. Esau, again, who is a symbol of Edom, the Western Gentile world of Christianity. Esau's attention. Why? He was caught with his eyes and he had this compassion. Chazal said, the sages say, when Esav saw, not his brother, not Yaakov Avinu who turned this time Israel, but when Esav was caught with his eyes and saw the lovely and righteous Looking little children of Yaakov, Esav changed his heart. He saw the 11 sons of Yaakov Avinu and he asked Yaakov, Mi Ele, who are these little ones? Why did Esav? Ask this question, me, Ele, who are these little ones? Exact opposite of what he has been seeing in his land of Seir, 
in the land of Edom, where the children are wicked, disobedient, troublesome, boastful, ungodly, because of the absence of the presence of Asha and the absence of the Torah Chedusha in the land of Seir, in the country of Edom, where Esau is ruling and reigning without spirituality, without God, without Torah. That is why the fruit of his seed created wicked children, created ungodly, unruly children, disobedient children. But when he saw the direct opposite among the lives of the 11 sons of Yaakov, his heart melted and his heart changed. And what happened? They kissed one another. They hugged one another. And up to the point when they were about to separate ways, Esau asked Yaakov to join him in his journey back to Seir, in his nation, Edom. It is a picture of Israel, the Jewish people, the house of Israel, together with the grafted in, in the house of Israel, being invited by Asaph, the Gentile Western Christianity, being invited to Seir, to Edom. How would you like that? You being in the house of Israel, you who had been revealed by God, the Torah Kedushah, have known the miraculous holiness and wonders of God every holy day of Shabbat? Are you going to allow the invitation for Asaph to invite you in that world of pagan idolatrous belief system? When Asaph invited Yaakov to go with him to Seir in the country of Edom, the simple answer of Yaakov is no. He refused. He just gave a reason that the walk of the children and the little ones among his flock, the animals, cannot walk together with the face, the pacing of Asaph. But the reality of the matter is he will never allow the Holy Torah to be polluted or to be replaced by some theological false belief system that is residing in Edom, in Seir, in Esau, which is a representation of the Western world right now, the Gentile Christianity. It is a beautiful revelation, my dear friends. Now from the mouth of a Navi, by the name of Ovadia, from the book of Ovadia or Obadia, chapter one, I would like to quote to you verse one. It says, This is the vision of Ovadia. Here is what Adonai Elohim says about Edom. As a messenger was being sent among the nations, saying, Come on, let's attack her. We heard a message from Adonai. I am making you the list of all nations. You will be beneath contempt. Your proud heart had deceived you. You whose, whose homes are caves in the cliffs, who live on the heights and say to yourself, who can bring me down to the ground? This is Asaph. If you make your nest as high as an eagle's, even if you place it among the stars, I will bring you down from there, says Adonai. If thieves were to come to you, or if robbers by night, 
oh, how destroyed you are. Wouldn't they stop when they had stolen enough? If grape pickers came to you, wouldn't they leave some grapes for gleaning? Verse 6, but see how Asav has been looted. Their secret treasure searched out. Your allies went with you only to the border. Those at peace with you deceived and defeated you. Those who ate for your food set a trap for you. And you couldn't discern it. Verse 8, when that day comes, this is the day of judgment, the day of the Lord, the season. It's about to happen very, very soon. It refers to the Gog o Magog, the day of the battle of Gog. Gog is the prince of Magog. He is the president. He is the ruler of Magog. It says, when that day comes, says Adonai, won't I destroy all the wise men of Edom and live and leave no discernment on Mount Asaph? Verse 9, your warriors, Diban, will be so distraught that everyone on Mount Asaph will be slaughtered. It speaks of the final battle of Gog, Umagog, the battle of Armageddon, referring to the scriptures in Ovadia, chapter 1. For the violence done to your kinsman, Yaakov, shame will cover you, and you will be forever cut off. On that day, you stood aside while strangers carried off his treasure and foreigners entered his gates to cast lots for Jerusalem. You were no different from them. Verse 12, you shouldn't have gloated over your kinsmen on their day of disaster or rejoice over the people of Yehuda on their day of destruction. You shouldn't have spoken arrogantly on a day of trouble or entered the gate of my people on that day of calamity. You know you shouldn't have gloated over their suffering on their day of calamity or laid hands on their treasure and on their day of calamity. You shouldn't have stood on the crossroads to cut down their fugitives and handed over their survivors on the day of trouble. This is the final travailing of Chavlei Mashiach. And this will unveil the intense battle of Gog Umagog. For the day of Adonai, verse 15, is near for all the nations. It is Edom, it is Asa, the nations. As you did, it will be done to you. Your dealings will come back on your own head. For just as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so will all the nations drink in turn. Yes, they will drink and gulp it down as be as if they had never existed. Verse 17, but on Mount Sion, that is Hakom, that is Jerusalem, that is the mountain where Abraham Avinu offered his son its cock, the binding of its cock. It is the place where the first and temple, first and second temple was built, where the Shekinah of Hashem dwelt his, with his people Israel. And it will also be the exact place where the third temple will be built by King Messiah Yeshua, together with Hashem, our Father. It says, listen to this, on Mount Zion, there will be a holy remnant who will escape. The holy remnant, those who had been spotless and purified, those who had been shaken but remained steadfast, those people who have given 
their lives as korban kai before Hashem. They will escape and the house of Yaakov will repossess their rightful inheritance. The house of Yaakov will be a fire and the house of Yosef a flame. The house of Yosef refers to the Mashiach ben Yosef, the followers, the believers, both Jewish and Gentiles. Setting a flame and consuming the stubble which is the house of Esau. Consuming the house of Esau. None of the house of Esau will remain. For Adonai has spoken. My dear friends, I hope you have been blessed with this prophetic message this messianic revelation of truth that will happen soon and very soon. Yaakov Avinu will turn Israel down to his sons and sons' sons and to his descendants that follow, that hang on to that sulam, that ladder, who is Yeshua the Messiah, our King, our Lord, will continue to do the redemptive work to be witnesses in the house of Israel for the Jewish people who are now non-believers at this point. But because of our faithfulness as the remnant in the house of Israel, from the nations of the world, all the, the souls, all the people of Israel will soon be saved. I pray that the zechut, the merit of Yaakov Avinu, Israel, our father, will be also our merit as long as we stay holding, climbing up that sulam, that ladder, and that is the Mashiach of Israel because he is the only way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. Let us always bear that ladder, show that ladder to everyone whom we come across with. Be powerful testimonies and witnesses, my friends, to all the people, first, into our homes, our families, secondly, into our neighborhood, thirdly, into the cities, and to the nations. And if you and I will be faithful, counting ourselves as korban chai, dead to ourselves, dead to our own priorities, but alive unto the achieving and doing the will of the Father in heaven, the house of Israel will be filled with so much souls who will keep Shabbat, who will be delivered from the pagan creation of idolatrous Sunday worship service, which can never be replaced by the genuine holy day of Hashem's Shabbat, who will learn Torah Hedusha, because this is such a deep prophetic messianic and instructions for our daily walk. May the God of Israel, may the God of Itzchak, may the God of Abraham bless you. And may you truly enjoy your messianic life through the ladder, through the sulam, 
was Yeshua the Messiah. But then you enjoy in keeping the Shabbat of Hashem holy. Keep it, guard it, be a Shomer Shabbat, a keeper and guardian of Shabbat. Let no one steal it away from you and be blessed by HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Baruch Hashem, Shabbat Shalom. Lay he trot, my friends. Before I forget, if you are blessed and you are being inspired and prompted by God to partner with this ministry, you may by all means. We are being confronted right now with, with so many obligations as the year will end. We are facing a lot of obligations that we are supposed to meet in order to stay on air in the service of Hashem. We are praying for an, a big amount of financial provision from Hashem. And if you are being blessed, and if you are being touched and inspired, and if you want to send your tzedakah, the acts of kindness, a part of your maaseh, a part of your truma, your offering, by all means do so. Get in touch. Get in touch with me. And Yeshua beautifully said it. If you sow in a good soil, you will reap 60, 100 fold. Do not sow in hard ground or stony ground or thorny ground because the enemy will just steal it away and it will be all of no effect. If you are blessed, it is maybe because this place is a good soil, that there is no sugar coating, there is no dichotomized, the sweetening, the compromising of the word of God. It is just being the pure, unadulterated, infallible words of Torah, presenting Yeshua the Messiah, the Jewish Messiah, as he is supposed to be presented first to the Jews and second to the nations of the world. He is the Jewish Messiah, not a Gentile Messiah. A Jewish Messiah, Yeshua, is the Lord of Shabbat, not any Gentile pagan created Sunday service. It is not. It is idolatry. My friends, be blessed and be a blessing to so many. I pray that you will be so enriched with the revelation of God. Shabbat Shalom.